Today we're going to use Linux Mint to go ahead and manage a Windows server using Ansible. So first of all we're going to fire up a terminal and we're going to go ahead and install Ansible. And this is a relatively straightforward process. We do an apt get install Ansible and we go ahead and download that. Now there are two other packages that we're going to need in order to make use of this. So we're going to install uh, the Python as well. This is one of those prerequisites for managing Windows because we'll need to install the, also the Python uh, WinRM module. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, get the first dependency out the way. So we're going to do again the install. Here we're going to need uh, Python version 2. Uh, you could probably get away with a later version, but in general we need the version 2 pin package. Uh, 3, as far as I can tell, doesn't really work all that well for us yet. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and install the WinRM Python module, which will just use the pin which we've just installed. And there we go ahead, install, and then pi uh, WinRM, and then the, just the closing. Uh, and preferably we want greater than, if I remember rightly, it's version 0.30. Um, this is our minimum requirement version, so that or higher is perfectly fine. Once these dependencies are installed, and as you can see we've got a small typo here, this is fine, this is just telling me that I have not installed it as sudo. So I'll just run the same command again, simple enough to fix that one, and probably I won't be the only one who makes that typo. So good to have it in the video, I won't bother editing that out. Now we're going to go ahead and actually start using Ansible. So first off we're going to go ahead and go to the exit Ansible uh, slash hosts file. Now this does contain a lot of template information and I really do recommend if you're getting just into Ansible, read it, it's a good documentation. But in our case to make our video a little bit cleaner what we're going to do is go ahead and just delete it and create a blank new record because we'd prefer to have that fresh. Now what this means is I'm just going to go ahead and start creating a new one. This will include my Windows host. Now I'm going to use the really truly imaginative name here of calling them Windows servers. Um, just because, well, it's a demo and that's what we do in demos. We make it simple. Now I've got the IP address of the one server that I intend to actually attempt here. Um, obviously this would normally contain either a range or multiple hosts, but since we just got the one for the moment, now we've also got some user variables here for our array. Now what we've got is a Windows user, administrator, naturally. We've got our super secure password and we're telling Ansible to use in this case the WinRM connection. We're also telling it to ignore certificates because we don't have a valid certificate. Now the reason we don't have a valid certificate is because we don't have an enterprise PKI set up. However, if we did, then we would be telling it, hey, you actually want to use those certificates. And we wouldn't have the ignore switch in there. So let's start by trying to ping our Windows server. So in this case, we're pinging the Windows server group. We're using the dash M switch for the module. And we're using the win underscore ping option. Now the reason we use that rather than just the regular ping is because ping is intended for Linux machines and the win ping is obviously intended for Windows machines. And since these use different protocols, uh, it's best to use the one that's actually relative to the OS. Now what I'm expecting to see here is a failure. Uh, one, because it's running terribly slow as you can see. And the other one is because we haven't actually configured our Windows host yet. So we have a response back telling us, hey, I'm not able to connect. Oh dear, oh, we, what will we do? Well, in this case, um, we're just going to pop over to our Windows machine and we're going to go ahead and quickly configure um, what is the Ansible requirements. Now, this basically means configuring WinRM and setting up a self signed certificate. Now, fortunately, to save us a bit of time, Ansible does have in the documentation a uh, script that you can just simply go ahead and run. Um, now, in this case, I'm also going to prove beforehand, because one of the things I want to do is install Chocolatey. So I'm going to prove we don't have Chocolatey on this server. And if we just fire up a new prompt, create the self-signed certs. So this goes ahead, does our configuration, a couple of easy steps. Um, again, if you want to know what steps those are, you can just quickly go to the Ansible documentation. It is right there. Okay, now that we're 
effectively configured, we should be able to go back to our Linux machine and start some operational tasks here. So let's get started. So let's try to do our wing pin again and let's see if our ping response comes back this time. And look, we get a Pong. Excellent. So we have a successful connection. So the basics are now there. We have our certificate set up. We have our username and password. So now we can go ahead and actually start creating a playbook. So playbooks, for those who are not initiated, they're just basically a series of tasks that you'd like to perform. So this is my playbook. They're YAML-based files. And I'm going to dump in here a series of steps that I'd like to do. So in this particular case, I'm going to tell it, hey, I would like you to go do critical updates. I would like you to install uh, WinZip, sorry, 7-Zip. Uh, and I'm going to do this with Chocolatey. Now, one of the good things here is even though Chocolatey, as we checked earlier is not installed on the machine since it's saying that we are going to install this with Chocolatey uh, and Sybil is actually going to take that step away from us and install Chocolatey for us. So since it's not present on the machine it will go ahead and just put that in because it's a requirement. So we're just going to type out here and Sybil playbook we're going to give it the name of our playbook and then we're just going to go ahead and run it because within that playbook is on a specified Windows servers. Now this is obviously going to take a little bit of time so bear with us, but you can see first task is coming up. Ensure that 7-Zip is installed via Chocolatey. So obviously the first step for uh, Ansible at this point is realizing, hey, there's no Chocolatey, I better install that. Then it's going to go, well, there's no 7-Zip package, so I better probably install that too. And then finally it's going to go ahead and start uh, adding the accumulative Windows updates and other parts that we added in as tasks. Now since all of those are going to take a considerable amount of time, I want to point out one of the other things that you may or may not notice depending on how much you work with it. Um, for me what I've noticed is if I install Chocolatey as myself, it is immediately available in the command prompt after I do the install. If on the other hand I install uh, Chocolatey with the Ansible, uh, probably it will work the same for others but certainly for Ansible. Uh, you don't get Chocolatey available at the command prompt immediately and in fact you do actually need to log out. So we can see that 7-Zip here is installed and it's now moving on to critical updates. So we're going to pop over to our Windows machine and I'm going to demonstrate what I mean. If I type out Chocolatey, which is usually where I'd expect to get a list of packages, um, it's telling me, hey, I, I don't know this command. So I go ahead and I'm just going to fire up the terminal again. You know, because it could be that, hey, the terminal is open. Uh, so I do the chocolatey list again, and again, still same thing. Um, so it's not an environment variable that's just fired off when you open up PowerShell. So if I go ahead and close this out, and actually log off the machine and log on again, I will be able to see chocolatey. So don't ask me why that is, it's just that's the way it is. Um, so Windows updates are still taking place, so we have plenty of time I'm guessing probably to do a log out and log in again. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to probably fast forward a little bit because those Windows updates will take a little while. So at this point we've actually fast forwarded a couple of minutes and my Windows machine is still busy installing Windows updates. But on the other hand what I have managed to do is log out and back into the Windows machine. So if I go to the command prompt here, or in this case um, PowerShell and type chocolatey list, uh, we can now see that we get a response and we can see that our 7-zip is happily installed as per what Ansible has already told us. So this is not a problem per se, it's just that if you're logged in you're not going to see chocolatey for that particular reason. So a log out and log in again is necessary. Shouldn't be a problem in most cases, but just something to keep in mind. Now, since I'm expecting that it'll take probably another half hour, if not more, since I've got a RTM release here, uh, I'm not going to make you guys sit through the tedious stages of waiting for critical updates. So I'm going to call it a day for this video, and thank you for watching.